Well, it's late at night. <laughs> is, is that it? Uh, so, interesting, as an astrophysicist, h- how can you explain uh, th- reincarnation? Where, wh- where does the energy of the soul go? How is it stored? How might it be recycled? Having a clue. <laughs> I mean, there's no astrophysical knowledge I have that pertains to any of that. But uh, the basic idea is that I believe, and I said it again, that consciousness <laughs> is the basis of reality. And so if consciousness is the basis of reality, then I, and that consciousness is the same consciousness as the Creator's, then it's basically immortal. It can't die. And so whatever conscious, consciousness we have is not something that's going to disappear upon death. It has to go someplace. I don't know what that realm is, but some other realm, and probably return again into another lifetime. And that lifetime will probably be colored by the, the effects of the previous lifetime or lifetimes. And that can lead to the, the concept of karma. And uh, that may explain how someone like a Mozart, for example, how did a Mozart uh, get to be born with the ability to write a symphony at age 7 and opera at age 12? Um, sure sounds to me like there was some past life experience that were here. Uh, the, the idea of a, of a, of a, of a soul, of an, of an energy, of a, of a mental, of a consciousness, do, we, do you think that trying to avoid the B word, do you think that the that this type of consciousness is restored in whole, that is to say passed down from one being to another being in its entirety, or is it just a, a fraction of the soul that came before it? Again, you're asking questions which I, I can't possibly answer. I can purely, uh, merely speculate. Sure. And that is, I think, that uh, given a lifetime, it's probably sort of arranged in, in its general outlines, its general structure, by, by the necessity of, of compensating for the, all the, the past things that we have done. Sort of the character that we become leads to the next lifetime that we choose to live. And so I think we kind of outline the, the, base, the basic elements of the next lifetime. We don't fix, it in, we don't fix anything in stone. We don't uh, carve it in stone. You know, we, we are free to deviate as, as much as we want to from whatever life plan we've laid out. Probably it's not a good idea to, to deviate from it. I suspect we, we have the ability to do that. But I think we sort of outline a general life that we, we, we feel is the right thing to live, given our soul's development, given the, the good and the bad things that we've done. And the purpose of that life is to, is to evolve as a spiritual being. But I, we're, not, we're not forced to do that, I don't think. So you accept the, the notion that upon our death, there is some sort of adjudication as to uh, how good we were in life, which will determine how well we will be rewarded. Well, yes and no. The way you put it sort of sounds very much like a heaven where we get re- judged and rewarded by a God. I don't think that's the case. I think it's sort of a self-judgment. We look at what we've done from a perspective that's different than the, the one that we are bound to here in, in this, uh, this physical plane. And we realize, oh my God, look what I've done right, look what I've done wrong. Let me try to uh, make up for the wrong things I've done. Let me try to, and perhaps in another lifetime, emphasize the things I've done well. Let me try to evolve upwards by undoing the bad things I've done and by perhaps uh, multiplying the good things I've done. So I think we outline for ourselves what our, our lives are going to be like, and then it's up to us to try to make the most of them. You made a reference earlier to perhaps we evolve into higher beings. How would you define higher beings? Are we talking angels? You know, I don't know. Again, what's the difference between angel and alien, other than that we don't know what either one of them is? Um, by higher life forms, I guess I was alluding to the possibility that elsewhere in the universe there are alien civilizations. I mean, most, most astronomers would take that for granted these days, given the fact that we discovered so many planets. There are almost certainly are other, other life forms out there, other, other planets with uh, civilizations on them. It's statistically pretty, pretty possible. And I would say, in fact, that's a pretty mainstream view these days. And if that's the case, then there must be more evolved civilizations out there. And maybe ultimately our reward is to get to the point where we don't have to come back to this Earth with all these problems. And maybe we can move on to some other uh, civilization where things are better, where things are more, more humane, more refined, more, um, more evolved. So that's what could I had the, in mind. Could the Earth be the recipient of the ill-behaved souls in other universes that have to go back before they can move forward? <laughs> You don't ask simple questions, do you? <laughs> do you want me to? Uh, sure. Well, no. Um, uh, is, is the Earth a, a, a prison planet? <laughs> You're asking. Well, I, don't I mean, know. It if, seems if, that way sometimes, doesn't it? If we evolve toward another planet, 
that would be some sort of reward for our evolution, then it would seem to be that it would follow logically that for people on the planet who devolved, that they would come this way. I suppose someone like a Buddha, you know, would have a choice of never having to come back here again. He's probably done enough good that he can move on to some other uh, alien civilization somewhere where things are far better. You know, I myself would prefer a, a Vulcan kind of place to a Klingon kind of place, but uh, <laughs> that's my own personal preference. Uh, it, it, it's been said, and I, and I, as somebody who reads these sorts of things, I, I accept this to a point, is that um, to, for every theologian, God is just a giant, blown-up version of themselves. <laughs> Unfortunately, in religions, that seems to be the case, because you have this belief that God is somewhere out there. Well, that's really silly, because somewhere out there means he's somewhere within the universe. Well, that still leaves the question open, who made the universe? And then who made God? So the notions of God that religions uh, propound is uh, really part of the problem. It's, it's certainly part of the problem between science and religion, because scientists can tend to scoff at things like this, and for good reason. It's certainly part of the problem with respect to how people treat each other. You know, when, people, when people blow each other up in the name of God, you know, kill in the name of God, there's something crazy going on. And that's why I think that religions have been pretty mixed in terms of their impact on mankind. And I would not, I would not uh, be sad if religions vanish in the future. But spirituality is a different thing. I, we can't get away from that, I believe, because I think we are spiritual beings. So you can't escape what you are. I think a deeper understanding of our nature as spiritual beings is what we need to try to find. And religions are not necessarily, not necessarily leading to a solution, because they have their dogmas. Their dogmas are oftentimes bound in very primitive terms, in terms that are even dangerous, as in the case of the, what you find in some of the fundamentalist Islamic uh, circumstances. Well, I think fundamentalism of, of any type often leads to violence. It does, uh, it does, and that's certainly yeah, very that's, ungodlike. But I think that's also true even in fundamentalist scientists um, who get, as, as you might have discovered in your own way, people that can't even have a conversation, a rational, kind conversation about something like a belief in a god, um, that, they, that that in itself just becomes so flustering to them that they, they can't behave. That's true. I mean, that's bad, but you don't find suicide bombing scientists. Yeah, but you you uh, surprisingly though I think you you do have people who are uh who are uh techno who are anti-technology who are not god believers the people who are sort of rooted in a um, sort of primitive belief in in a natural state um and they they wouldn't fall into the category of uh of of a believer and yet they they also turn to bombing and killing and you have luddites you have people who are you know, non-religious types who who are out, like the Unabomber or other people who who just sort of feel like it's their obligation to stop society in general, and or you have people who are atheistic in 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 Soviet Russia who had no problem at all killing, being mass murderers, and they they completely rejected all forms of of religion. Don't well, you think? You're, you're certainly right. Religion does not cause all the world's problems, but it doesn't help any. I just taking back another quote of Stephen Weinberg, which is not a bad one. Well, here's a quote. He here's wrote a quote. one time, good people will do good things, and bad people will do bad things. But for good people to do bad things, that takes religion. <laughs> you know, here's a quote of mine. that I think uh, the, uh, the difference between the bad things that religion has done and the bad things that science has done, it's uh, measured only by the fact that religion has been around longer. Could be. Could be. <laughs> uh, and science hasn't been up an, enough times at bat yet <laughs> to be able to have done the same damage that religion has done. Could but be, could be. They, they have enough innings still left ahead that uh, I wouldn't rule that out from, from science yet. All right, but that does bring me to uh, other aspects of the book and the title there. I want to get to the zero, what, sorry, zero point field, yes. uh, and I want to ask about that, and I want to ask about the principles of inertia, and uh, and then I want to tie this all back again to where we started. And I'd like uh, we're to talk about the uh, digital universe if we could, too. Oh, by all means. Then we'll tack that on for the next hour. It'll be a while before we get to calls, but every time we start a new topic, the phones start ringing. So I know people want to get in on this. The God Theory, the Universe, Zero Point Fields, and What's Behind It All, plus the Digital Universe, next on Coast to Coast AM with Dr. Bernard Haish and Ian Punnett. 